Hey everyone, it's Clint. Welcome to Sweetcast. Tom Taylor is in the news. He's on CNN being interviewed by Anderson Cooper for a full 18 minute long interview. What? They're talking about comic books. Why is this? You could probably guess it's because Superman is bisexual, not gay, bisexual. Uh, it is anyway, regardless, we're going to get into that. And, uh, this is exactly what I said would happen. <laughs> this is no surprise to anybody, but this is how, uh, people get on TV that write comic books. This is how regular people realize what, what, what they make comic books still. That's strange. Um, and is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Let's talk about it because I have a sinking suspicion that Anderson Cooper has a sinking suspicion. So before we get into this story, though, I got to tell you that I am going to be launching a Black Friday-esque campaign probably this week. Um, I think I could technically do it today, but I probably won't. It'll wait. Maybe it'll be Wednesday or Thursday. I don't expect this to be massive, but I do know that there are those of you out there who are awesome and you want to help support me as a creator. And one way that you, I think it's hard for me to say, Hey, I'm going to sell you some of the same stuff, um, you know, for black Friday. So I created some new items and they're going to be on sale. I think it'll be a lot of fun. We're going to be doing pogs, a full set of 10 pogs and a slammer that you get with it. If the nineties are coming back, uh, trading card sets specifically made just for this black Friday sale and they will feature uh, a crossover. So there'll be characters from Gods and Gears, which is an Alterna title, fantastic Alterna title, as well as Downcast. So this is doing a number of things. I'll tell you more about it uh, in the coming days, but be aware of that. And if you wanna get some gifts for some people that you know, I think that comics are a great gift. So I'm gonna be making some great packages and at the very least pick up some pogs and some trading cards, uh, even better, Again, get some comics, get some gifts for people that you think would enjoy comics. All right, so I'm going to play you one small clip from this. This is Anderson Cooper, 18 minutes long, interviewing Tom Taylor, of course, about Superman. And uh, getting to this clip, first off, Anderson Cooper, uh, I, I, the whole story here is the fact that Superman is gay. That's how it starts out. Uh, you come to find out it's not Superman, it's Superman's son, and he's not gay, he's bi, and Anderson Cooper smells something fishy <laughs> because he keeps coming to that same conclusion. Now, let's take a step back for a moment. Is DC Comics next level genius for this? Because they know they're not going to get any attention in mainstream media outlets by making the same comic books. They're gonna have to do something that is along the lines of the death of Superman. Well, when you think about it that way, if if the death of Superman was enough to get a lot of attention, making Superman buy is akin to killing Superman, it's, uh, you know, that's a head scratcher right there. But as they go through the story and some elements of the story, there are two things that Anderson Cooper keeps coming back to, and I want you to listen to this question. Is Superman just curious or is this, is this, I mean, this is print, this is in print. So yeah, this is in print. I mean, he kisses a guy and he likes it. <laughs> uh, to paraphrase <laughs> okay. the song. Um, and look, they're going to be a real support for each other moving forward. And it is, this is part of his identity. He doesn't actually have a secret identity. Everyone knows who John Kent is. And this is going to be another part of his identity. I really, I think the idea that, uh, would, did you come up with that idea of that, that Jay would, ha was Jay already an established character with that, that, that power of being un not able to be hurt? Because I think it is so clever. Um, okay, so it shut up, Anderson. I'm going to stop you right there. All right. So again, those two things and you heard it there, you keep coming up. He asks a question about Superman and at first he's like, eh. This whole thing seems suspicious. He didn't say that, but you can hear it in his voice. You can see it on his face because he thinks mm, this really looks a lot like a way to get attention on comics. That's what this looks like. My goodness. Now, I guess that's in the tradition of comic books in large, 
But today's day and age, I cannot believe that this still works. And I have to believe that Anderson Cooper is thinking to himself, I'm being made a fool of. <laughs> because next week, next month, it doesn't matter. They can change writers. They can change anything. Um, it doesn't matter. In 10 years from now, this will be a small footnote. Who knows? Does it matter, though? As long as they get that sweet, sweet CNN attention, uh, I guess nothing matters at all. Um, they sold a lot of comic books, apparently, or enough to sell out of first issues. Uh, and again, this is the drug that Marvel and DC are addicted to. That is making major controversial <laughs> changes in their characters and their storylines in order to get attention and sell out comic books uh, to speculators or to people that don't give a rip about comic books, but they like the novelty of, uh, you know, whatever Superman kissing a man. Um, and so they'll go for it. So, you know, we talked about variant covers, variant skin colors, variant, uh, sexuality. How is this any different? Well, I don't think it is at all. Anderson Cooper gave uh, Tom Taylor a moment to address critics or people that would say, hey, you're just being political. He even said that you're politicizing comics. To everybody that says, no way, this is just normal. It's you know reflecting normal life. There's no, you know, there's no politics about it. Of course there is. This is 100% leaning into it. It's waiting for a backlash, a reaction, so that they can get a lot of attention. I guarantee you that in this uh, news uh, interview, he would have mentioned haters and uh, bigots that didn't like the changes, but they didn't because there really weren't any to speak of. We heard some nonsense about people being afraid for their lives uh, over this, but honestly, I, everyone saw this coming. My assumption going forward is that every single character in comic books is bi because at any moment when these publishers need sales, that's what they're going to do. Anderson Cooper also asked him about the motto change, getting rid of the American way. He seemed suspicious about that. He seemed suspicious about several things that seemed to be contrary to what Superman was uh, or has been at his core and why this would be different. Um, and, and I also found it interesting that Tom Taylor said, you know, when he's speaking to his critics that are out there, air quotes, to those critics, he told them, that this isn't the real Superman. This is Superman's son. So this is how you have your cake and eat it too, essentially. <laughs> You're going to have that Superman logo. Uh, and uh, beyond that, one other thing of note is that DC challenged him. This is what Tom Taylor said. They told him to make a new Superman, period. That was the basis of this. Make a new Superman. From there, Tom Taylor came up with what that new Superman would be. He said it would be a missed opportunity if it was another straight white savior, which bigot much? I mean, why would you say that? If it's a straight white savior, it was a missed opportunity. That tells me and confirms that DC Comics absolutely needed or wanted to create a brand new Superman, not an existing, existing one that we've all known for so long, a brand new Superman. Uh, Tom Taylor took that as an opportunity to um, make some woke points, I guess, with that Superman. And uh, now, as Anderson Cooper has uncovered, that is in print. So there you go. Now, does any of this really matter? No, I don't think so. I think ultimately this is about trying to uh, stimulate some sales uh, by DC Comics. And I really, really wish that politics and... Um, going hardcore woke and radical as Tom Taylor said, why do you guys pretend like it's normal? And then you say things like that. <laughs> like if you change your audience, then you're very proud of being radical <laughs> and political in this interview it very leans into that. He's happy to use those words, that terminology radical. Uh, but when you're speaking to critics, you pretend like everything's normal. Just say what it is. But <laughs> if that's the criticism that you are being radical uh, with comic book characters, then just own it from the get-go. Own it to your critics as well. Like, I don't understand this. It makes no sense. When you think it, it gives you points to be radical, 
then you'll use the word. When you think that it makes you look like a buffoon, then you pretend like, uh, you know, you're going to gaslight the fans and pretend like this is how it's always been. You know, nothing, nothing's changed here. Uh, anyway, so pretty, uh, you know, it's, it's just what we've come to expect. Anyway, interested to see as this new story fizzles out, uh, Robin's already done the same thing. Who is next? We can put our guesses below and, uh, don't forget, check out soon. I will be live streaming when I launch it, um, in the next couple days or so. And, uh, check out those pogs, get yourself some pogs. Remember the good old days and perhaps some comic book gifts for people that you know and love. Thanks so much. And I will see you in the next video.